Hey, what's up all? Wardrobe here for a really cool unboxing. I do want to thank Lock and Load Tactical for sending this my way. I um, uh, appreciate it. Um, it's very cool to get this um, real quick. I got the notice on Sunday. Gosh, was it Sunday or Saturday? It was Saturday that it was mailed and it's here. It might have been Friday, but gosh, I really think it was Saturday. Um, so pretty cool. Battles to the Rhine, Lock and Load Tactical. So, um, this is the um, back of it, and basically what's cool is this is the lead designer was Devin, um, who is the old, uh, I'm sorry, the old, well, maybe, but the original Grognard um, on YouTube, but he's also helping with Lock and Load Tactical Development, and this is a scenario pack designed, I think, all by Devin, which is pretty cool. So, um, I can't wait to play some of the scenarios. This is strictly an opening, an unbagging. Um, it was in such a tight bag, I have no idea how Darren and the gang there put it in the bag. So that bag is now in the trash, and I will find another bag, and I have a box of these loose things that I've keeping in. But anyway, it got here. It's in great shape. Battles to the Rhine. Well, what is it? And I'll just kind of skim here. Basically, after the breakout from the Normandy beachhead, the German army was on their back foot. The war is now going against them. The Allied forces were advancing every day. Uh, at Villar Bocage, where the German tank ace Captain Whitman faced, forced the British to pay a heavy price for every Bocage line they captured to the dogged fighting around Carrington, the rapid encirclement around the Falle Gap, uh, Operation Market Garden, breaking into the Maginot Line Bas and Bastogne. Uh, there's six new scenarios, five maps based off of maps from Heroes of Normandy, including three new snow maps to reflect the cold and bitter fighting around Bastogne. Three scenarios focus on British Canadian forces and three on American forces. Included uh, is a new half counter sheet of American and British infantry forces involved in these fights. We also have included new rules and counters that allow vehicles to use smoke and white phosphorus. You do need the Heroes of Normandy to play, which unfortunately is sold out almost everywhere. You can probably find used copies around somewhere, so that's a kind of a bummer. There, I, th I think they're working on getting a reprint done this year or next. I have no inside information, but... Um, Anyway, I know they're wanting to reprint it because obviously it's an important one. So, so let's just do some uh, quick flip throughs here of uh, battles to the Rhine. So, um, of course, the kind of the standard stuff. They do have a little different stats on the American forces. One six fours. Um, I think that is that's not new. But what's different? So these these aren't airborne, obviously. But when you are fighting with multiple. Um, Squads, you um, do not have their firepower, um, but you do add. Now, half squads do have their firepower, um, as described. So if you had two, one, one, six, well, that wouldn't work. How about how about three? If you had three in a hex or three in a fire group firing, or is it one hex? Whatever. Anyway, it'd be, it'd be two firepower, right? Because it'd be one plus half plus half. Well, here it'd be one, two, three. So it's, you know, one more on a die is another 16% chance to, you know, 16. Anyway, doesn't, a one is a big difference when you're rolling a, a D6. Uh, it has the whole squad reduction thing, you know, you roll a die. I think that's kind of fun. That changes games up a little bit with really relatively simple rules. Um, so no new German units and forces. There's only new. So I'll show those in just a minute. They do have smoke shells and like a, a count of how many smoke shells you have and white phosphorus. I've not read the rules on these, so I can't tell you really how those play out. But they do have a number. These are basically just to keep track of like your stock or inventory of them. And then you have white phosphorus, which does some you know, different kind of... It's a little bit a very powerful smoke. Um, and then white phosphorus depletion. Snow maps, of course, a little advertising. Then let's just look real quick. Urban hide-and-seek, Village Bocage, uh, France, June 13th. You got British and Germans. You got three boards together. That'll be interesting. Blood-stained Bocage, Crossroads at uh, west of La Charlemagne, yep, France, July 4, 11th. I need to get Devin on here um, to talk about these scenarios. Birthday present, kind of is. My birthday was yesterday, so thank you. St. Denis Lagasse, France, July 15th, yesterday when I'm filming it. Into the Tiger's Den, St. Lambert, Sir Dive. I'm butchering these and I apologize. Looks like a bridge crossing. Capture or Elst. Are you funny, Devin? Elst Holland, September Market Garden. I hadn't seen this in a while. Please don't read the paragraph here. Advertising. Aachen Bloody Aachen, uh, October 18th. Uh, Cowboy Up, Phil Stroff Fans, November 19th. Christmas Day Flurry, 
west of Foy, um, France, December 25th, 1944, using this new snow maps. The Mad Minute, it's a bad, mad dash by the Germans over some open ground, which looks nasty. And that's it. And then they include all the charts, which is kind of cool. Some of the off-board artillery summaries and all that. So it's nice to have those. Never have enough of those, really. So that's the book. Really thin. It's good. I should have looked up the retail price. I have no idea what it is. Let's look at... What did I do with the... Let's look at the counters here. Not much to see, really, except for really one. And see if I'm zoomed, able to zoom in there. So that Captain Whitman is a little different. Um, we got Cap Colonel Heath. I don't know. I don't remember seeing. You don't see very many eights, eight leaders. Um, Sergeant Nichols looks like a, I'm guessing that's a tank leader. Just your heroes. These really, pop, I had like five of these popped out when I got it. Um, Lieutenant, uh, this was interesting. The the British have one seven fours. I thought that was I don't and I couldn't. I just really did a quick scan. I don't didn't see that. That's a nice long range there. Another hex helps. Um, I'm sure there's some other differences here that I'm not seeing. And your leaders, and then you got your uh, your white phosphorus shell um, uh, counters. So that's cool. Smoke and white phosphorus. And in the back is the actual smoke counter and white phosphorus, which is cool. And as you saw, that one just popped right out, which is cool, but just not cool until you get them sorted out. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these. Probably just mix them up. All right, let's look at the maps. Let's see. I'm probably going to have to zoom out for this. Yep. Well, anyway, you can see the details. They look really good. Well, that looks really good on zoomed in like that. But for, let's go. So this is 14S. Um... I mean, not much to say. I mean, it's what it is. It's the map. It's the board. But um, let's zoom out even more and get rid of those. And let's just compare it to the other 14. This is the old 14 I have. Can you see it? Yeah. Same, but you don't have the fields or the hedges. The buildings are even different, though. So... I thought that was interesting. Pretty much have the same impacts, although this one's wider, so it does block a little bit more. Um, that's why I, I, I really like to talk to Devin about their thoughts on just changing, even changing the buildings. I thought they were just gonna be like winterized of that map. But um, there's 14. I mean, I'm fine with it. I just kind of curious on the thinking there. So let's uh, put that upside down. So 15S, I mean, they're pretty much gonna look the same, right? The buildings are a little different um, from new to old. So let's look at this. Again, same general map here. What I thought was interesting was this though. I found this one and I don't remember where I got it, but there is a another 15 <laughs> winterized. I do like this, this wintering better. This is more realistic. But it's really hard to see stuff. Um, so it's like that whole thing of, like when I paint minis, it's like, do you want realistic or do you want to see it? Well, I kind of want to see it. And so this is how that Noville Bastone map was. But I felt like it was a little lighter. So I do like the, the just more, boom, white, stark snow. Because, like, like, check this out. I mean, I can barely see that building there. I mean, you probably can't even see it there. Where it's here, you can see it. I mean, it's almost hard to, like, see it, period. This, these buildings on this map match these buildings. They don't necessarily match these buildings. In fact, they don't match these buildings. The orientation is different. Um, that one, this one goes, you know, it's just interesting. Like this goes all the way to the edge. This doesn't, it's fine, but I, I got to think it affects line of sight in some cases. Um, so, but I like it. It's, it's uh, cool. So, okay. Let's take a look at 16. What is that one? That's an old one there. Okay, so 16. 
Now this is quite a bit different because if you see the spring, autumn one, fall, I'm sorry, summer, no hedges. So it is wide open. So it's really a different thing. So, well, I think this is pretty supposed to be bocage. Bocage does not go away in the winter time. So, so that's interesting to me. I mean, there's like, I do like the trees though. So I feel like this is more of the, maybe the HD like version. So this is very open and very dangerous to cross. So good luck with that. That's when the Germans have to cross in that one scenario. Okay, now, so then they, and I'm also curious about this numbering here they used. So you got 80, order, did I mess up my order here? 84, the bridge. And these are all X maps, by the way, so far that I'm showing you. So 84 is a new map, but here is the old 17. This one I'm a little curious about. I'm like, uh, what? this is a little bit more naturalistic. So I'm like, why are we getting a new map? I'm not really clear. I guess this allows you, you don't have to go buy something. And I know they want to avoid you having much dependencies. So that's cool. Um, I mean, this one just looks a little bit more natural. This is the new one. So there you go. I mean, not much to see there. Different. And then the last new one is 85. And we've seen it before because it's 18. Again, much more natural looking. But same exact, except for the buildings are different. They're all still black and red. So. Now, while they look the same, you could combine these up and have yourself a pretty nice, busy urban, relatively busy urban map if you wanted. So that's cool. I, I, I don't, there's not a whole lot to show you different because it's pretty much the same, but just kind of the urban map um, of it. Now, this, what was interesting to me about this pack was is it came with all these X maps, which is pretty cool. Well, they just, but in addition, I, I say they just threw in, well, in my case it was, but you get all the same maps in the normal size. So let me compare one for you. I think I should do that. So that happens to be 15S and there's 15S. So not huge difference, but on your table, I mean, that's a difference, right? I mean, if you're just playing with that map. So one reason I always think ASL is amazing is how much game you can get in such a tiny board. Well, this can be the same. You get a lot of game in the tiny board here. And when you have three maps or two maps together, it starts to make a difference, right? I mean, there's two maps there. In the sizes it takes one map, really. So I do like having the small versions. Um, it's starting to fill up my box, though. I'm gonna have to figure out how to store this stuff. Um, so that's it. I mean, that's the pack, but so you get six new scenarios for the game, some new counters and new maps. I would say that is a pretty cool, cool deal. You do need heroes of Normandy, um, to, to play it. I would go ahead and buy it. If you're going to, if you think you're going to be playing the game, uh, I would go ahead and buy it. Um, I haven't played any of the scenarios, so I don't know. Um, so I can't give you a review, but I can tell you that I, I like the look, um, I, uh, the maps look cool and I, I'm going to try to get Devin on here on the channel to see if we can talk about the scenarios, the thinking, the counters, kind of some of that stuff. So maybe do a little deep dive into some of the rules, um, that sort of stuff. So, um, cause I know he's working on other scenario packs. Um, I think that's all I got to say about this. Um, pretty cool. Thanks lock and load again for sending that out to me. Um, pretty awesome. And I need to get some games in so we can, um, see how it plays. All right. This is Wardrobe out. See ya.